giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Breaking into our top 10, Justin's going to lead us off with Team 3310. From Heath, Texas, Rockwell Heath High School, it's Blackhawk Robotics. 67 wins, 10 losses, and a tie overall. And they were the winners of the Turing Division and World Finalists in Houston. An incredible five banner year for 3310, and what a year it was. 3310 finally showing everything that they're made of, ranked third in Turing, and were selected first overall by 254. And it was just an awesome alliance to watch. Won six straight matches to take the division, 5 0 in the round robin. Just incredible match play. In the finals of Minute Maid Park, it went to three matches and just so close uh, to getting a world championship for 3310, but take nothing away from the season that they've had and the robot that they built. Um, they really show that they are uh, power in Texas with. Um, you know, right up there with 148, 118, uh, and so many others. Yeah, so I mean, they, go ahead. I was going to say, 3310, uh, to me, uh, just played absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yeah. I think both them and 254 made a fantastic team uh, together. Uh-huh. To see their strategies play out uh, throughout the competition, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it, you know, 254 pairing up with them and and that team, you know, people questioning if they get out of division, that sort of thing, and then uh, 3310, uh, those two pairing up together, I thought just made such a phenomenal alliance. And uh, I'm going to start being a broken record, but I thought their their match strategy and their match play, I think I thought was on par, on point. Uh, and Mike, you know this, we were at Minute Maid Park and you know we saw them win the first match. Well, we watched it on our phones and then winning the first match because we couldn't see anything. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I already started typing up, congratulations to these winners because after watching match one, I was like, there's no way uh, it's not going in. You know, things change the other way. Uh, but with that said, uh, 33-10, a great season. I think both champs, I think you bump them up a couple more seeds uh, for that. I think uh, prior to champs, I actually think this ranking is pretty accurate for something like that. But after uh, after champs, you bump them up a couple more. Yeah, agreed. I think, yeah, post-champs. Um, uh, yeah, bump them up a couple. I agree with that. So. Sounds good. All right. And then our, I'll take this one, Justin. You can do this one. Oh, oh, are you sure? <laughs> Dude, you got <laughs> so you got so cocky, cocky, cocky. Uh, I was doing so well. Did you mute again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm drinking water now, and the ice is like there's like a, a half a half a mountain worth of ice in there, so it collapses and it's loud, and I muted and forgot to mute. Anyway, in the ninth spot is Team 971. From Mountain View, California, and Mountain View High School, it's Spartan Robotics, an overall record of 46, 10, and 1, and they were the winners in the Galileo Division in Houston. Uh, this may be one of the most simple and effective designs we've seen out of 971 in recent years, and uh, helped uh, them scoop up three blue banners and three design awards this season. With the robot weighing in at under 100 pounds with bumpers yeah. and battery, <laughs> they were able to zip around defense and not stop scoring. So they had uh, a tiny footprint, um, Christine wrote this one, which is pretty much the size of a poster, and which is about 22 by 24 inches. They're able to squish onto the, the back or the front of a HAB 3, allowing for eff- effortless double climbs. Uh, just an epic season for 971, really always puts out kind of those unique designs um, and really showed here as well. So uh, a great season, like I said, great season for them. It was just really, it was really fun watching them. And uh, they, the way they're the way their robot is designed, I don't know what about it, but it kind of has like this, I don't know if it's chain or whatever, when they kind of go up, it just has like a really kind of unique sound that you can hear when they're, when they're raising their elevator up to go score. It's kind of fun. So. Any thoughts on them guys? Or is that pretty good? Uh, Place wise? I think it's pretty good for them. I agree with the, around nine here. Yeah. I, I, I think agree. it's relatively accurate. Yeah. I have to say that one of the team that we talked about this when we were in uh, Detroit, one of the teams that really from the get go, emphasized you know or saw how important the double climb um ended up being and the triple climbs so the fact that they were able to make the robot their their footprint like mike talked about so small um really just um you know was a advantageous design for them and something that they saw early on and, and not very many teams um not very many teams did at least not to the extent that they did making the robot so small sounds good all right and back to back for me Back-to-back back for you, you're going to yes. luckily talk about Team 2910. <laughs> From Mill Creek, Washington, and Henry M. Jackson High School, it's Jack and the Bot. They have an overall record of 74-11, and 11, and they were quarterfinalists in the Newton Division in Houston. So we kind of already talked a little bit here about Jack and the Bot, but they took home three district wins this season in the Pacific Northwest District Championship. High expectations were in place for them. I uh, thought we might see that 2910-1323 alliance, like we said. 
Um, but um, both of those teams kind of had some some matches in qualification matches or losses in qualification matches that kept that apart. So um, they would be selected number two overall, no surprise there, but uh, would lose to the number seven alliance in qualif- in quarterfinals. Uh, despite this, I think eight um, is a good spot for them. Uh, they have an, still an incredible machine. It's not, for me personally, not only a little higher, just for kind of their cap potential. Um, just being able to do the ground game, which they do amazingly and so well. Um, but there's some other um, three-level robots that you know could be placed ahead of them. So, uh, really great watching them maneuver the field. Um, I haven't you know I haven't watched them in a couple of weeks now, but so just watching some footage before the show, man, they just move so well um, when when just moving around the field with their swerve. So, really uh, looking forward to see how they do again next year and bounce back from this one. Tyler, were you going to say something? Yeah, we, I mean, we've talked a lot about 2910. I think it was very disappointing to see them out in the uh, quarters, uh, pairing up with their fellow PNW team, 2471. Uh, you know, looking into, I, you know, I think we called it, it was almost impossible from the seed number one in their division, right? Like with only being able to score on level one, the, the likelihood they'd seed number one, I think is quite low. Uh, so to me, uh, I would probably bump them back a few ranks uh, just based on, you know, their por- their performance should just didn't see, seem as quite on par at championships. Not as bad as 16-19, uh, but it just didn't seem quite up to par as what I expected from them from the rest of the season. They're still a phenomenal machine. You can uh, learn more about them, by the way, on FRC Deep Dive, which is one of the shows that we do uh, with host Nick Cousins, where they give a really great insight to how their team operates and runs. Uh, so still love that team. I still think they have a very, very bright future. Uh, th- ahead in the future years. Uh, once again, this is a pre-champ ranking and number eight. I thought was very appropriate for the time, uh, if not even a little underrated at the time, but obviously they did not perform up to snuff at uh, championships. Yeah, really, uh, you know, kind of overhyped them up a little bit and then, yeah, didn't, uh, didn't see the performance like we were hoping. Just want to give a, a quick message since it looks like we have a lot, uh, some new people in our chat that I've never seen before. Uh, keep in mind, we do keep a pretty tight ship here at First Updates now. This isn't a general uh, free-for-all for things. Uh, please be courteous in chat uh, during the shows. Uh, that is what we encourage uh, for this sort of thing. If you want uh, to do uh, other stuff like that, feel free to go You know, troll some other uh, Reddits and Discords and that sort of thing. That is not for us here on Fun. This is a private chat room. We welcome you to be here. Just once again, don't be a moron. And we'll- <laughs> it's just so easy when I click in your name and you've been following since four minutes ago. It's like, all right, you're out of here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you're out of here. All right, cool. So moving on to our seventh ranked team. That's going to be Team 118. From League City, Texas, Clear Creek High School, it's the Robonauts. 74 and 11 overall were the semifinalists in the Carver Division in Houston. 118 was a winner of two district champion or two district events and a regional heading into Houston. Uh, 118 played well, ranked sixth, and were selected to the number two alliance. Uh, they had, they did have to face the juggernaut of 1670 and company, and were out in two matches in the semis. But 118, of course, another great robot, but in the end, just not quite enough. Uh, you know, the robot will be back next year, ready to compete for a world championship. So I actually think 254 got a lot of comments uh, over the course of the season about, you know, not being necessarily up to their level. I think 118 kind of falls in that category for me personally. Um, when I saw the robot release video, it just was missing that one thing that was that usually just has a wow factor for me. Um, there were one of the few teams to utilize a really effective uh, hatch ground pickup, which was nice. I don't think it would end up being super useful um, all the time. But it just wasn't quite that that wow from 118 uh, mm-hmm. that I typically get. I actually kind of feel like 118 and 148 kind of swapped uh, roles a little bit. 118 mm. kind of kept it pretty simple, um, and you know nothing too fancy or flashy. And then 148 kind of uh, took the mantle up a little bit. But that's just how I feel personally. Um, 118 just kind of was a little bit of a letdown for me this year. Well, the Omni drive didn't help, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that was their downfall. I think. I mean, yeah, were they a perfect robot in other areas? No, but I think they were a pretty darn good robot in other areas. And I just think the Omni drive uh, was your downfall. Um, I know it, it's impossible to know what it would take to do something like this, and I'm sure people in 118 are probably screaming like, "Why the hell do you ever think we'd have the capabilities to do this in such a short period of time?" But I am surprised they didn't look at swapping up their drive uh, to something else with more traction, and I. It, you know, for me, if, if you would have put um, a just uh, more of a traction wheel on something like that instead of Omnis, you might have saw a completely different story with 118. Absolutely. All right, so that's a little rant about or a little discussion on 118. Mike's going to talk about in the sixth spot, Team 2056. 
from Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada, and Orchard Park Secondary School. It's OP Robotics, an overall record of 64, 6, and 1. They were the semifinalists on the Curie Division. So big thanks to Christine for this write-up as well. So coming into the championships with four banners and a silver medal showing, the, um, showing at the Ontario Provincial Champs, uh, we all expected epic things out of 2056 on a stacked Curie Division. They ranked third overall at the end of quals, and their BFFs, 11 14 and pretty in first. It was no shock to see them pair up. OP, Simbots, Trident Robotics, and 107 breeze through quarterfinals, and then came the semis. 2056 is no stranger to defense, but they were suppressed to a tie um, in semifinal match number one, 95 to 95, um, which, due to tiebreakers, uh, uh, was a loss for them there. Uh, they came back hard in semifinal two with the win, but then fell to the number three alliance in semifinal three with a score of 106 to 98. Uh, Christine says she was blown away by the driver's ability to navigate the field and grab moving cargo um, consistently and put up tons of hatch panels. They took home district chairman's award this season, along with another amazing on-field performance. I uh, hope to see them at the IRI field this year and perhaps um, get a back-to-back -back win uh, for them. And uh, I sent this picture to um, Tyler, I think the 2056 account post, I think that's where I saw it. But they were um, there's a picture of Tyler Holtzman, their coach, and their drivers looking um, like at a tablet, um, like immediately after the match, watching, um, watching some footage. And I know, mm -hmm. I think the footage was from Stan, their uh, I think like their lead mentor and teacher. Um, he records it um, from the side of the field, and they like immediately watch it right after. And, and that I sent to Tyler. I was like, this is how elite teams become elite. You know, they they self scout themselves, um, and they look at what happened, what they could have done better. Um, and stuff like that. So um, this is, you know, teams that just come so prepared for championship and uh, do everything that they can to um, just to do as best as they can. So 26 on the great robot. did a behind the bumpers with them as well. So check that out on YouTube. Just, I love their, their robots are always just so solid and machined well. And just, um, it's great. I would uh, just last thing here before we uh, move on, but um, Tyler was showing me, what they do on their driver station, they they have two two cameras. They use the limelight for one, and they also have another one. So they have two on they have two screens on their driver station with two different camera angles. Plus, they have readouts from like so many different encoders and sensors. So they have like real time feedback if something isn't working right. They know which one and all this stuff. And then on top of that, what they do is then they use the software OBS, which is what we use for this, um, and then they just screen record their driver station. So then they can kind of go back and have all of that data as well um, and then have the, the robot kind of perspective of what's going on. So uh, very cool. I did talk to Tyler. Maybe we might get a hold of maybe one of those um, and be able to publish it for, for people to see, but that's um, that's to be determined. But yeah, I don't know anybody else had thoughts on 2056. That was kind of long-winded, but. I mean, I think you said it all, man. Great, yeah. great team, phenomenal yeah. uh, robot. Um, always look forward to seeing them every year. And I, you know, obviously, Disappointed to be on the semifinals, I'm sure, um, but still a fantastic machine. Yeah, for sure. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.